guys welcome back to my channel whoa it feels so weird to be on camera it's been a hot minute since i've picked up my phone and filmed a video for you guys it feels super weird a few of you have reached out to me on instagram asking me if everything was okay if i was okay um kind of just checking in and wanting to see if i was still gonna make youtube videos which is honestly so sweet considering how small and intimate my youtube channel is and then obviously a lot of you guys have still been interacting with my videos leaving comments and i have been replying but i truly just needed a break from filming editing coming up with video ideas something that you probably wouldn't know about me is i'm actually very slow to share anything about my life in real life i'm more of a listener and i let other people talk unless i'm asked or prompted i'm not just sharing things about my life so on youtube which i love that i get to be the one to share everything about my life but it's definitely kind of strange later into february i was kind of thinking where do i kind of want to go with my youtube channel what's my intention how do i want to show up what do i want to do it feels so good to be back because i knew i was going to come back but i just didn't know when staying true and genuine to myself and not following trends you guys know if you've been here i am super 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 particular when it comes to spending money and to be honest to make videos that people want to watch you have to spend money you have to be willing to redecorate every single room in your house 40 different times do a bunch of hauls on a genuine level for myself that's not what i would be doing if i wasn't making videos so i'm not going to do it just to make videos if that makes sense I really value savings. I really value just everything in life that is not on camera. So kind of just getting in tune with what's genuine, what's not, what are you filming just for YouTube versus what is something you would be doing regardless of having a camera in front of you. And I've done a great job at this. Nothing that I've shown on my channel is something that I wouldn't have done anyways. It's very hard to stay present when you're filming, even if you're being intentional, because you're thinking about angles, you're thinking about what you want to say, and it really takes away from my real life experience. And that's also something I want to be very mindful of. So I really just needed a break to kind of enjoy the present time, pray about what I wanted in my life, the direction of this channel, and knowing that once I come back, I need to be consistent and not just keep going back and forth. So I actually filmed a few videos maybe about a month ago, and I was like, you know what, I'm not ready. I trashed the videos. When it's time, you're gonna know, you'll refilm the videos if you want to, and then you'll take it from there. So I finally feel like I'm ready. I'm like itching to be back. I'm so excited. We have so many things that we've done, so many things in the works. I need to sit down. It feels so good to talk. It's been so long. But anyways, we have a few things that we want to do to the house as far as touch-ups go. We haven't really done any touch-ups since we've moved in, so we want to touch up paint. There's some grout in the kitchen that we want to touch up from the backsplash. And then also our office doors right here. There's a little project I need to do to kind of seal in some of the... It's confusing to go into. Once we do that, I'll show you. really want to get eventually a sideboard in our bedroom um, just to go under the TV to add some more personality I guess it's not a priority just because it's not going to change anything as far as day-to-day -day living goes that's basically just like a piece of decor um, but we are finally going to get our kitchen dining room area figured out that's something that we also had on the back burner just because we have this island it's it's been great for us. But anyways, I'm planning on filming a couple videos here today. The weather's so beautiful and I just feel like I'm ready to get up and at them. Um, it's like 65 degrees. We are on the hunt for a new grill. We used to have a hibachi style grill at our first house. And when we moved, we gifted it because I really wanted like a true genuine grill flavor and the hibachi style was just not doing that. It just felt like... I was cooking inside so we got rid of that and we are on the hunt for a new one so we're probably going to go to home depot or lowe's just to see kind of which one we're wanting and then we want to have it by memorial day weekend so we can grill out and just spend some time outside and then one he's just doing some yard work right now so 
I'm gonna film and I will catch up with you guys here in a little bit. Okay, I just got back from outside. I spent some time with Juan, kind of seeing where he was out with the yard work. And of course I needed some fresh air. And also I filmed my other videos. So you guys, I need help because I have been hoarding. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. I've been hoarding magazines. Now, these have just been sent to me over the past year, I wanna say, or so, and I don't wanna throw them away. Some I have thrown away, but they're just so pretty. Like, look at these gorgeous, like they're good quality, nice pictures. Great inspo, but I just have so many and I don't know what to do with them. I honestly don't even know why they send me magazines. Like this is from Restoration Hardware. Look how thick it is. I don't know if you can even tell. And the pictures are amazing. I look through them every now and then just cause they're totally my style. This one's another one. This one's huge. Look at how pretty all of the inspo picks are. I have Banana Republic. I didn't even know that Banana Republic had home decor. Like that's so strange. Um, I have a few McGee & Co. I have two of the same ones. See, I just have so many magazines. I have a plethora of Serena and Lily magazines. I have some small art house ones more serena and lily they have some shades of light i have never even heard of them but they have like some cute light fixtures i have pottery barn crate and barrel william sonoma i just have a ton of magazines i don't even know what to do with them i have a couple of them on our nightstand just like as coffee table books like using them the same way because they're thick but I have a ton that I don't want to throw away and I don't know what to do with them. And please, if you guys have any kind of suggestions for me, what I can do with these gorgeous magazines, please let me know. Juan and I, we started a new tradition that I wanted to share with you guys. We have talked about kids every single day, basically since we met. We talked about having children so freaking fast. I wanted to be a mom since elementary school literally and then one he's like six years older than me so he obviously was at that point where he was thinking about you know the mother of his kids so that was a conversation that came really early on in our relationship and i cannot wait for that day to come and in the meantime we decided that we wanted to buy a children's book every single month up until we have our first child and I mean, it's probably gonna go longer than that too. I always see such cute things for kids. We don't know what the gender of our future baby is gonna be, so it doesn't make sense to buy toys or clothes. So I thought books would be so stinking special. I actually used to work with children when I was like growing up in church. I would always help my mom like with her classes. And then in high school, I took a couple classes where I would work directly with preschoolers and kindergartners. And then outside of high school, my first like real nine to five I actually worked in a daycare for a few years so I just love books I love children development and that was actually like what I thought my career would be was being a teacher like in a K through 12 setting um I'm glad that did not happen god bless these teachers but I just find books and children development especially in the home so stinking important so we started implementing getting a book every single month this is our first two we got one in January one in February we're currently in March now so we need to get a book um when you guys see this video it will be April but we got two books this one is called just in case you ever feel alone. And then this one's called When I Pray For You. We got these both at Barnes and Noble and they were like in the religious section. They had so many, I wanted to buy like 50 books each time we were there, um, but just one at a time because we have so much time to make up for buying books. But we got um, cardboard books just because when kids are, you know, babies, um, you want them to be able to hold them and not feel like the pages are fragile. So we got our first two books as cardboard books and I wanted to write a little note in them somewhere, but one, there's not really a good spot because this is the back page and this is the first page. So it starts into the book right away. So maybe I can do it in the back, but kind of thinking ahead, if these books ever get donated, I would hate to ruin them with writing. So 
maybe I'll buy like some index cards and tape it to them. That way we can take them off, but I don't know. I'm just so excited for this tradition because I always see so many cute baby items. We don't know the gender, we don't know anything, like styles change, whatever. So I just thought having a book every single month is such a great way to build our children's library. They'll be able to use them over and over and over. And I wanted to share with you guys just because I thought it was so cute. Okay, so I wanted to talk about this DIY coffee table that I shared last year. I've gotten quite a few comments since I've been on my little hiatus about how it's held up and kind of concerned about the fact that it's basically only held together with glue. I did put some makeshift galvanized straps on the bottom side of these three pieces just to kind of hold them together, but the legs are standing on their own just with the wood glue. And I wanted to show you guys, there is absolutely zero separation since i've made the table it's 100 percent intact it's completely sturdy we have a dog he's crazy he's actually accidentally ran into this multiple times and it does not budge at all we've moved our table a few times because sometimes we push these two couches together and we move this table over here if you want to secure it a little bit more you can but the point of this coffee table was really just a beginner style very very easy the only concern i probably would have this is something i've talked about with Juan. whenever we do have a young child i may just round this corner out just to make it a little bit more of an oval just like child proof it a little bit but besides that it's completely functional i have zero concerns about this falling i'm obviously not putting a bunch of heavy equipment on it it's literally just for decor and also like we put our drinks on there one has his feet up there sometimes woody our dog has ran into it um again if you have any other concerns you can always secure a little bit better if you want to but the wood glue is 100 percent safe 100 percent sturdy and it's been i think i built it i don't remember exactly when i built it i believe it was july so it's been a couple months shy of a year and it's 100% intact. So I just wanted to give you guys some follow up on that since I have had some comments about it. <sighs> you guys, I feel so winded right now just from talking so much. I'm wanting to share a few Target bowls that I picked up last weekend. I've been doing grocery pickup probably since October is probably <laughs> This is bad. October is probably the last time that I did in-person grocery shopping. I was just going crazy with the mobile online drive. I don't know what I'm saying. The pickup at Target, we were doing that for our groceries. So we went to Target in person for the first time last week. So I went through the whole entire store. I went through the decor section, of course, and I found a couple bowls that I absolutely love. And I honestly, not gonna lie, I don't have a spot for them right now, but they're just so stinking cute. I know for sure one of them I am going to use as a centerpiece on our kitchen table once we get that, but the other two, I don't have a spot for them. I may return one of them, maybe, maybe, just because I don't have a spot for all three. I probably should return all of them because we don't even have our kitchen table yet, but ugh, I couldn't, they're just so cute. So I wanted to share. So I'll start in the order that I put them into my cart. So I got this white speckled ceramic bowl. This is by the Threshold Collection. I'm not sure if you can see the texture on there. This is a pretty big bowl. This is the one I'm thinking is going to be the centerpiece once we have our kitchen table. It's just so pretty. So the kitchen table itself is gonna be wood and then the chairs around the table are brown because i went back and forth so 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 hard on which kitchen tape or what kitchen chairs that i wanted and i just kept gravitating towards like a light white cream upholster and i was like valeria you have way too much light colored stuff in this house and you do not want light colored kitchen table chairs because food is gonna fall when you have kids that's a disaster you don't want to be micromanaging people when you have people over for the holidays or for a dinner you don't want to feel like you're tense because people are eating on white kitchen chairs i don't want another thing to have to clean um 
So we're thinking about getting brown kitchen chairs. So it's probably more of a backstory than you needed. Anyways, so I thought having this white creamy bowl was going to kind of tie together with the kitchen over here. Um, and I just like how big it is. It probably doesn't come across, but it's by the Threshold Collection. And it was only $25, which is not bad. I will say my perception of home decor is kind of messed up because I prioritize my two things that I will spend anything I need to on is my home, because I'm a homebody. I'm home literally 95% of the time because I work at home and I just don't like going out, so I'm always home. And then vacations. I will splurge on a vacation any day. So home decor, if it's expensive, if I want it, I kind of just buy it, even if I like kick myself a little bit. So $25 for me is not that bad. Super, super cute. That was the largest bowl that I got, the biggest and the most expensive. This one's the smallest one and the cheapest. It's also by the Threshold Collection times Studio McGee. And then look how pretty that texture is. It's just so itty bit. Well, it's not that small. It's probably like this a little bit bigger than a cereal bowl. It's like kind of like 3d tally marks it's just like a dirty brown it's so pretty i if i return any of these it's just not gonna be this one absolutely not this one's probably my favorite i don't know if i said it's 20 dollars and then this one is the medium sized one this one is by the hearth and hand with mongolia collection artesian handcrafted round bowl and this one's $24.99 so literally just a penny cheaper than the bigger one and it's so pretty if I were to return any it might be I don't know because I feel like this would look good on the kitchen table as well but it's not as big as this first one I will say this one I'm not sure if it's ceramic I feel like if I were to drop this I feel like it wouldn't break like it almost feels like a fake ceramic. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just so pretty. It kind of reminds me of like a Mayan clay. Just has a very subtle texture. And then the bottom has like that velvet material. That way it doesn't scratch your furniture, which I for one really appreciate because these two do not have that. So this one might be best for the kitchen table, but once we have that, we'll see which one I like. Um, but yeah, I got these three bowls. We'll probably end up keeping them because they're so cute. I'll link them down below in case you guys like them as well. But I figured I would share because you guys love seeing my home decor and I don't know if they're new or not, but hopefully if you like them, they will not be out of stock for you guys. So if I can find them, I will link them down below. Okay guys, so we finally left the house. We're at Home Depot right now and we stopped to get drinks. We went to Igloo, which is like a local like mom and pop soda shop they have food and i got a marshmallow vanilla coke extra marshmallow and now we're at home depot and we're going to look at the grills we just got home it is 9 50 at nine right now and i am exhausted we ended up going to home depot and lowe's we didn't find any girls that we liked at Home Depot, but when we went to Lowe's, we both fell in love with, of course, probably the most expensive one that there was to offer. So we found a Blackstone. It was so stinking nice. It was half grill and then half griddle, which I surprisingly really want, um, even though I already talked about how I don't really want the griddle style. I want the charcoal, but the fact that it was half and half, I was like, best of both worlds this is really nice and since it was the first time that we had seen it we decided not to get it this time around one he's going to do some research and kind of see if it's one that he would be interested in actually purchasing just since it's a little bit more of a splurge um it's super super nice i believe it was like twelve hundred dollars um and if that's the one he wants that's one that we'll get but we just wanted to do some more research on that um so hopefully by memorial day we'll have a grill whether it's that one or another one at least we kind of got a good idea of what was out there and then we ended up going on a dinner date to outback which is a very special place to us we have two special spots so sonic was actually our first date we went and got slushies on our first date and it was just so special 
chill, romantic, and simple, which is literally exactly how I am. I'm such a simple person. And then the night after we got engaged, we actually celebrated together privately and we got appetizers at Outback. So anytime we go to Outback, we always kind of just like reminisce on our engagement story and it was just so sweet and so fun. It was nice to kind of go out because again, I'm such a homebody. I'm definitely more of like a cook at home and then when we eat out we mostly do take out i just love being at home so it was nice to get out and eat at a restaurant especially at our special spot and then after we went to dinner we also went to target and i wanted to show you guys what we picked up we're going to california in a couple weeks and there's like a couple toiletry type items that i needed and just like this is all kind of like self-care stuff that i've been running low on i ended up restocking my face wash i just ran out of this a couple days ago and i love it because it removes makeup and i use this whether i wear makeup or not it's just very convenient for me to have one face wash no matter what the occasion is makeup no makeup dry skin oily skin this is a perfect catch-all i always get the value size and it works so well also ended up picking up some makeup wipes which i normally don't use anymore because i normally just wash my face but since we're traveling i thought this would be a lot more convenient to kind of just get the majority of my makeup off and then wash the rest of it off with my face wash so this will be very easy to pack into my bag i also picked up some more cotton rounds i ran out of these quite a while ago and i kept forgetting to pick them up and i finally remembered every single time i would wash my face especially when i had makeup on i'd be like oh my gosh it would be so nice if i had a cotton round especially to take off my eye makeup so i finally restocked on those i'm a perfume girly through and through i was actually going to buy a new perfume earlier today but they didn't have it in stock at ulta I was gonna buy it online it's like an estee lauder perfume i have like the body oil and i was running out i wanted to try the perfume and it wasn't in stock so i was gonna buy it tonight and then we went to target i ran into this fresh knee body mist it's like a hair body and linen mist it smells so stinking good it was only 15 dollars i guess it's ashley tisdale's brand which i had no idea i smelled. i was like oh my gosh it smells so good and then the display had her picture i was like i had no idea she had a perfume collection there were two that i liked there were a ton of scents one encouraged me to get two i was like let me start off with one and if it lasts more than 10 minutes maybe i'll get a second one because it was only 15 dollars. and like i said i was gonna buy like a 75 dollars perfume earlier so i feel like i got a bargain i hope this works out it smells so stinking good like i said it had she had so many scents and then last but not least i ended up picking up another hair oil this one's actually for one i have this exact same one already and then one he's been using it for his hair because sometimes he doesn't like using gel or hairspray because he wants like a more soft effect he's been using mine he likes how it turns out so he wanted to get his own so we got another hair oil this is by the odell i don't know if that's how it's pronounced but the odell brand yeah that's everything we got i'm just gonna go take off my makeup probably watch a show or two and i will catch up with you guys in the morning hello guys do not mind my messy hair i have not filmed all day because the weather is so darn beautiful today and it's going to rain for the next four or five days so me and one wanted to definitely take advantage of that so we were outside all morning all afternoon we even went to a park and sat over there for a little bit just to get some of that fresh air in a different environment this morning probably around noon i threw some meat into the crock pot because i'm making birria ramen which i have been craving and we're kind of honing down to the last cold days it's pretty warm today but it's gonna be cold the rest of the week as it rains um and this will be our meal throughout the week but we wanted to get our last soup of the season in before it gets really warm and we're outside just cooking on the grill so making beer ramen right now i just cooked our ramen noodles on the stove over here this is a brand i always get i love the chicken flavor this is what the meat looks like it's so tender 
so juicy it smells amazing i normally use crock pot liners for easy cleanup but we actually ran out and i didn't notice until i started cooking and now i'm just going to make it it's really easy now that the meat's done the meat's probably it's not even that hard to make it's just a really long process and it takes a while i chopped up the onion and cilantro this morning that way i didn't have to do it now and then i love a bunch of lemon in mine i just love the tangy sour taste and then we also have leftover tortillas from last week's meal i made taquitos um and then juan he's gonna have a couple with his i don't necessarily want any Juan, he doesn't like a bunch of juice when he eats noodles so I'm just gonna give him straight up noodles and then he wants a little bit of the juice from the meat and then I like a little bit of both so this is Juan's well like I said he didn't want any juice essentially from the ramen and then this is mine we each just did one packet i kind of just eyeballed it because i made them at the same time on the stove and then i put a little bit of juice in mine and now we'll see if i can do this with one hand but i'm going to serve up some of the meat gonna make sure i shred it a little bit which i'll probably have to do with the fork okay i shredded the meat up a little bit with the fork and then Depending on how spicy you want it, depends on how much of the gando you would want, which is this juice. One only wanted juice from the meat, which gets pretty spicy. And then if you don't want it as spicy, you can use more of the juice from the ramen noodles in comparison to juice from the meat. Perfect, gonna mix it up. Wish you guys could smell this right now. It smells so stinking good. So this one's mine. I like a little bit of extra onion. And then one, he's more of like a light onion kind of person. And then again, I love cilantro. Some people think cilantro tastes like soap. I don't feel that way. Perfect. And then I'll do half of a lime for each of us. I got these limes from Target. I normally get limes from the Mexican store and I felt like they were kind of hard. So I hope that I can get some good juice. Oh yeah, they're pretty juicy. I was worried. There's the final product. It smells so dang good. One, again, like I said, he's going to have some tortillas, which I'm just going to heat up on our comal. And then that's dinner for tonight. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to end the video here because I really can't imagine myself picking up the camera. We just have some cleaning to do. We're going to go outside a little bit more and then just wrap up everything. That way we can get the work week started tomorrow. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I will make sure to leave that recipe for the video linked down below in case you guys want some kind of guide to follow in case you've never made it before. Make sure you subscribe if you have not already. I have so many video ideas and I'm so excited to be back. Um, so make sure you subscribe that way you don't miss out on any future content. And without further ado, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.